On Saturday, February 10th, several thousand people met at the steps of City Hall in downtown Los Angeles for a Labor for Palestine rally. Speakers addressed the role of the labor movement in opposing militarism and war, the supply of weapons by the Joe Biden administration and the Democrats, and the need for the unions to take up this issue and those who haven't to immediately issue ceasefire statements. Speakers included members of UAW 2865, members of UTLA, Unite Here Local 11, the Palestinian Youth Movement, IATSE 871, the Writers Guild of America, Teamsters, the United Steel Workers, the California Faculty Association, and there were also contingents from sag and Medical Workers for Palestine. Organizers passed out petitions calling for the LA Labor Fed to immediately issue a ceasefire statement and calling on union members to push ceasefire statements and BDS resolutions in their own locals. After the speeches, attendees marched down the streets of Los Angeles to Pershing Square. Correspondents for KPFK's Working Voices and Rebel Alliance News were at the rally and recorded these speeches. My name is Rahma, and I am a member of the Palestinian Youth Movement. We are a transnational grassroots organization of Palestinian and Arab youth across the U.S., Canada, and Europe, struggling for the liberation of our homeland from the river to the sea. We are here today and every day demanding an immediate and permanent ceasefire. This is the most urgent of our demands, but our demands do not end there. In order for Gaza to be rebuilt after over 120 days, 120 days of constant bombardment from land, air, and sea, there must be an end to the siege on Gaza. For true freedom and true liberation, we need the end to the 75-year occupation of our homeland, Palestinian prisoners released and for Palestinians displaced across the globe to have a right to return to their homeland. A ceasefire without an end to all U.S. aid to Israel will not, will never last. And we have mobilized over four, over the last four straight months and have only grown, grown stronger in our collective power and become even more organized. Los Angeles workers and organizers to take a stand against genocide and settler colonialism. We are here to tell our unions and to tell our officials that there is a current that does not lie down in the face of injustice. A current that sees workers' liberation as intrinsically connected to the liberation of all of the oppressed. As we see, as we see mass support uh, for Palestine rippling through Los Angeles, the U.S., and across the world, as we witness hundreds of actions shutting it down for Palestine, it is clear that the masses of the world stand with us! We welcome all unions and organizations with us today who have been organizing their co-workers, confronting Zionism in their workplaces, and passing pro-Palestine resolutions in their locales and look forward to hearing from them. And so to start us off today, I'm going to be introducing Jenna, a member of the Palestinian Youth Movement. As Nahma said, my name is Jenna, I'm a film worker, a member of IATSE, and a member of the Palestinian Youth Movement. <laughs> resistance of the Palestinians. 
No amount of collective punishment by the Zionist entity will bend or break the will of our people behind the fence to continue the resistance and achieve complete liberation of our homeland. The Zionist state has failed and will continue to fail to deter our people from the struggle to liberate Palestine. It is only through the steadfast resilience and unwavering resistance of the Palestinian people and through international solidarity that liberation will be made possible. Our struggle is a Palestinian and Arab cause, but is also a fight against imperialism and colonialism. We believe in joint struggle because Zionism is part of the broader imperial struggle that has ravaged not only Palestine, but endless other nations as well. As the Palestinian revolutionary Hassan Kanafani said, the Palestinian cause is not a cause for Palestinian only, but a cause for every revolutionary wherever he is, a cause of the exploited and oppressed masses. The carnage we see in Palestine today is closer than we think to us here in the heart of empire. It is our tax dollars, the money of the working class, billions of dollars, that is being sent to directly fuel genocide in Palestine with a proposal for another weapons deal waiting in the wings. Shame! Shame! We have an obligation to stand on the side of justice. We refuse to be the fuel of America's war machine, of its economy that accumulates millions in wealth by selling weapons of death to the Zionist state. We will continue to disrupt the flow of profit for those who get richer with every weapon sale or technology sale that they send to Israel and for every business deal they make with Israel. Those who line the po their pockets with the blood of our people will pay. In the past few months, we have seen the arrest of over 4,000 Palestinian workers, workers from Gaza, who obtain permits to work on what is rightfully their land. They have long been abused, starting with their dispossession. But, on, but starting from October 7th, these workers have been captured and imprisoned by Israeli authorities because they are from Gaza. Many have since returned to Gaza with number tags around their wrists and ankles, revealing the dehumanizing treatment and abuse and torture of Palestinians. And this example reminds us the primary relationship between so-called Israeli working class and Palestinian working class is not one of shared class struggle, but rather that of a colonizer and colonized. Yeah. It reminds us Zionism extracts from Palestinians to continue the genocidal settler colonial project. And we know that the labor movement is a powerful part of the liberation movement in Palestine, as it has been through liberation movements throughout the world. Some of the first forms of resistance in Palestine were general strikes, refusing to work on settled territory. Some of the most powerful moments in history have been when working people organized to stand against injustice. When Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1930s, or when Pinochet's fascist dictatorship seized Chile, or when formal South African apartheid was consolidated, trade unions across the world mobilized justice and liberation. It was this building of pressure from every segment of civil society that advanced the cause of liberation. And a couple months ago, three major trade unions in Belgium, which comprise over three million members, announced the refusal to transport weapons by plane or sea to Israel, fighting the Zionist aggression in Palestine.
We are here today to show that workers in the belly of the beast stand with Palestine. There is a conscious current in our unions, and we are unafraid of any blacklists that serve to scare us into submission. I say again, as a film worker, to Hollywood that has long been used as the propaganda arm of the U.S., we are not afraid of your blacklists. Who can take up on a fight like this 
is us. Because we understand the power of collective action and we know what it takes to hit the streets day after day, week after week, until we win. Because we know when we fight, we when we fight, we when we fight, we so this is the first gathering of LA Labor for Palestine, but it is only the beginning. Because as organized labor, as workers, as peace-loving people of the city of Los Angeles, we will do what it takes until the demands of the working class, the demands that our government refuses to implement are met. We will be out here until we gain a permanent ceasefire. And it will be an end to all aid to Israel. And until we lift the criminal siege on Gaza. We need to intensify the struggle. And it will take commitment. It will take sacrifice. But I know we will stand victorious alongside our Palestinian siblings. I know that we'll be on the right side of history. And I know that because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. So we know that we'll send the message clear today that there will be no business as usual until Palestine is free. <laughs> which represents more than 36,000 tutors, readers, graduate student instructors, graduate student researchers, and teaching assistants at the University of California. I am also an organizer with Jewish Voice for Peace, which is the largest progressive anti-Zionist Jewish organization. According to labor historian Tony Michaels, the Jewish labor movement was arguably the largest upsurge of activism in American Jewish history. And as journalist Dave Zirin has put it, the Jewish justice movement is being reborn. We are standing up as part of a global resistance movement against the U.S.-backed Israeli genocide against Palestinians against the conditions of colonialism, apartheid, and occupation that keep no one safe. Indeed, at one point, there was a vibrant left-wing, working-class, anti-Zionist, common sense that could deride Zionists as nationalists, imperialists, and out of touch with workers' reality, and we're here to make that common sense again. to Palestinians in their struggle for freedom and liberation because we have a commitment to Jews and Jewishness and because we are committed to racial justice and collective liberation. We, all of us, are here demonstrating our power as workers because we know that for the fight for Palestinian freedom to succeed, we have to unite global progressive movements. More and more workers in the U.S. and around the world are speaking out for a ceasefire, an end to the siege on Gaza, and a free Palestine like never before. Doing so in solidarity with Palestinian trade unions and professional associations that have called on all of us to end our complicity in this unfolding genocide. In the labor movement, we say that an injury to one is an injury to all. And so we are here to honor the call for solidarity. As workers, we know that we have no choice but to organize collectively, to organize each other, and to leverage our power into building the labor movement we want. 
one that analyzes and challenges the connections between U.S. involvement in imperialist wars, the consolidation of power and wealth in the hands of a few, and the eroding wages and rights of workers in the U.S. and around the world. We want a labor movement that mainstreams opposition to Israeli occupation and apartheid and materially dismantles these systems in part through boycott, divestment, and sanctions. <laughs> Zionism was first and has always been challenged by a global transnational left, and our labor movement now is an important part of the global coalition that is necessary to bring about justice and equality for all. So to paraphrase labor organizer Mary Mother Jones, we mourn the dead, and we fight like hell for the living. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming today in support and solidarity with the Palestinian people in Gaza and for congregating on this last indigenous colonized lands. My name is Ahla Mahtasem, I'm a professor of media studies at Cal State San Bernardino. I'm the co-chair of the Palestine Arab and Muslim Caucus, which is part of the Council on Racial and Social Justice of our union, California Faculty Association or CFA. one of the largest public institution unions in the United States with about 29,000 faculty members. <laughs> Comrades, 126 days of non-stop televised genocide in Gaza. It is estimated that every day 15 people are killed, 6 are children. 35 people are injured, 42 bombs are dropped, and 12 buildings are destroyed. Hint, joined over 12,000 Palestinian children killed by Israeli terrorism when, she, when her body was found today after 12 days stranded in her family's bullet-riddled car. Her corpse and the corpses of her family members were badly decomposed. The corpus of the medics who rushed to save her as she pleaded with her mom and the Red Cross Society dispatchers to save her were turned into ashes by the Israeli merciless shelling of their ambulance. One more war crime that we are supporting in this country with our tax money because of our genocidal president. Shame! Shame. On October 16, the Palestinian trade unions called on the world to end arming Israel and stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people. At that time, the union was horrified by the 6,000 bombs that Israel dropped on Gaza. Imagine that by the end of December, Israel had dropped 29,000 bombs on the most densely populated region in the world. Yeah. And today, we don't even know how many more bombs have been dropped thanks to our tax money and no thanks for our president. And I want to thank you all for responding to their call and come in solidarity to the call of our Palestinian trade unions. Well, our faculty union, CFA members, started a historical strike on January 22nd because we were told over and over that we, there was no money for fair wages, decent working conditions, no money for even lactation stations for working mothers, that we need more tuition hikes for, for our struggling students. The Biden administration was capable of and willing to send $14 billion raining death and destruction on the heads of innocent Palestinians in Gaza. Shame! Yeah. Over $60 billion for another proxy war in Ukraine. Shame! Yeah. Imagine if we got one billion of these for our struggling families in California. 
In his October 19th announcement, Biden made it clear that he was serving the interests of the military industrial complex when he said that this was not a free giveaway, but to replenish our own stockpiles of weapons. Shame! Shame. As war well, criminals of Israel announced their land invasion of Rafah, where half of the population of Gaza have been forced out of their homes two days ago, this genocide is committed by our money. Shame! Shame. We are now the biggest supporters of terrorism in the world, and by that I don't mean us here, but I mean, unfortunately, our genocidal government. Yeah. How more corrupt can our president be? Not only him, but most of our elected officials, and unfortunately even our CFA union leadership, who have been trying to silence us, the FAM caucus, and censor our activists for Palestine in all their might, citing money and loss of membership dues as the reason they can't allow the FAM caucus to pass a resolution for ceasefire. Their silence on Palestine and the genocide is deafening. It's aiding in killing more and more innocent Palestinians. It's maintaining a genocidal colonial apparatus in control of the lives of the marginalized. We come here to join you all as rank and file, not as CFA leadership, who accepted an unfair tentative agreement by the CSU and ended a historical strike in just one day. Shame. If you are a CSU employee, please vote no on the tentative agreement. Vote no on genocidal no. Cease fire now and free Palestine.
We all know it's been over four months of this ongoing genocide, and it's way past time for us to all, as a labor movement, to say, Yavasta. Years down the road, I, I shudder to think how people ask, how did CFA respond in the midst of the genocide? And all I can tell them at this point is we remain silent. But that's not something I want to have happen. So we got to keep fighting to make sure that we can do more about this, right? We must continue to engage in principled ideological struggle and push for greater democracy within our union ranks. As academic workers, we should be outraged that nearly every university and school in Gaza has been destroyed by Israel, right? The Times Higher Ed Education Report from January 29, 2024, found that Israeli military action has killed at least 94 university professors in Gaza, most notably poet uh, Rafat Ali Alarir, right? We all know our man, right? if we must die, if I must die, what must you do? Live. You must live. Thank you, right? We must live. The report adds that hundreds of lecturers and thousands of students have also been killed. They're calling this a form of edgicide. And we have to sort, as faculty workers, we cannot allow this to happen to other workers, faculty workers across the world. We must recognize common cause and support our union siblings in the Palestinian Federation of Unions of University Professors and Employees. That's why I'm grateful for the PAM caucus of CFA led by Alam who are engaged in principled ideological struggle and pushing for our union forward on this matter. PAM is circulating a powerful resolution that will be, be introduced at the upcoming CFA assembly. We are going to push forward with this, calling upon the union to demand, first, a permanent ceasefire. And then the USA to Israel, open road crossings for humanitarian and other aid into Palestine. To support the Palestinian call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions. And, and really important to, for faculty workers and for students, right, that are organizing on our campus, for academic freedom to be able to talk about these issues and not be marginalized in your university because you speak out. And for our students who are organizing and demanding a free Palestine to not be kicked out of school as happened across in too many universities across the country. These are all reasonable demands that fit neatly within our anti-racism social justice principles. The only thing stopping them from being adopted is fear and unwillingness to listen to member voices. And so we have to speak louder and let them know this is not acceptable, not in our name, we're not gonna let this happen, we're gonna fight for it. Because and the last thing I'm gonna say is, y'all, I don't know if you're a CFA member here, we say vote down the TA, vote up the PAM caucus resolution, right? Solidarity with Palestinian and all workers of the world, free, free Palestine!
full editorial control over our work and our labor. From TV shows like Homeland or American Sniper, we understand that those in power use our work to manufacture consent around war and reinforce the unjust systems in place. But you know what? We won't be fooled again! Since October, we've seen retaliation against artists, against Hollywood labor, as these same people try to blacklist us into silence for our support for Palestine. Our whole careers we have seen, we've been taught to stay complicit, um, to stay complicit in the, sa in the same way that we've been taught to accept breadcrumbs, to accept 16-hour workdays, to accept unsafe working conditions against our will. But we're not afraid. These intimidation tactics won't work. We are stronger together, and as IATSE members, we are sticking together. So as we gather here today, Palestinians are being massacred as we speak. Nearly 30,000 murdered, or 30, yeah, 30,000 murdered, 12,000 of those probably children. The conditions of Gaza are uninhabitable, and displaced families sleep in makeshift tents or out in the open. Starvation and disease run rampant, and Netanyahu, with the support of Genocide Joe, right, he has announced that he is amping up the violence to terrifying new heights despite any ceasefire proposals set forth by the Palestinian resistance. So, Union siblings, we must act urgently. We must act quickly. We, as working class people, understand the consequence of not looking out for each other, both here at home and internationally. The billionaires will try to pit us against each other. They've done it before, since the beginning of time. We know the studios, they don't care about us. They don't care when we can't afford rent. They don't care when our crew members fall into deep depression or addiction due to abusive work hours. They do not care about the ir irreversible injuries uh, on our bodies, or even worse, when we fall asleep or fall off studio rafters and lose our lives. So we must rise up in solidarity with even more strength than before for Palestine. We must intensify. We must intensify the struggle here in Los Angeles. We must refuse to make their genocidal trash propaganda and refuse to stay silent. Because the fight against apartheid is a union issue that all workers should have a vested interest in. We need to answer the call of the Palestinian labor unions, put pressure on the U.S. to stop all military trade with Israel and all, all, all aid. Uh, demand an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Say no to Genocide Joe and the Democratic Party because your time is up and our time is here. Yeah. Understand that our fight, that the fight of the Palestinian people is our fight. Thank you very much.